Hi folks, I'm just going to do a wee, uh, demonstration video here on how your new van operates. So I'll just start off inside here and we'll go through all the wee bits here. So, if you see here now, the first thing we're going to look at here is your control panel. Let's see if we can get her to focus in here. That's better. Right. The main thing you have here is, you can see the wee screen there, you have your main on and off switch which is here. And that's it on and off. So that's it off. And back on again. So hold your finger on the button. And that's it lighting back up. And I'll just go through this checking system thing here for a second. It'll do that itself. And that's it ready to rock. So over on this side here, now we're looking at, you just have a clock here which is the clock that's up on the screen at the moment and if we go on down here we look at volts and that's the engine battery there at the top and your leisure battery at the bottom so the two of them are 13.6 now the van's not plugged in at the moment but if you plug it in it'll probably not go much higher than that really it'll be in and around the same thing you know the next one down the bottom is amps and you see there we're, we've nothing switched on the van so there's no amps now if we plug in it'll start going up this way and if you're using a lot of power it'll go down that way it's just a wee, it's only an indicator really but the main other thing you're going to need is just your, your lights inside um, your levels in you can see you press this you'll get your fresh water tank I take it is at the top and your waste at the bottom and you can see there's just a wee bit there in the fresh water tank at the moment and the next one then is your pump so anytime you want pressure in your taps you'll switch on your pump there and you can see the wee, there's a wee red light comes on there when you switch it on and off so that's just your control panel so the next thing we're going to look at here is just your fridge. Now there's only two buttons in the fridge. You have your temperature here. And it just goes up and down. And then over on this side here is your what you're going to you can select your three different settings in the fridge. Now at the moment it's on gas and you see it's an automatic. You have four different settings actually. You have 230 volt. We're not plugged in at the moment so that's flashing telling us that it's not going to work unless you plug the van in. So that's your 230 volt. Your 12 volt's the same. That only works now when the engine's running. So that'll only work when the engine's actually running, that runs off the, the alternator, off the, the van itself. And then the last one then is gas, and we have the gas switched on, so that's running okay. So the same thing with the, once you once you switch on to whatever's available, you can have gas, electric, or, or your 12 volt. And then the last one then is AU, which is automatic. Now at the moment it's doing the same thing, it's going on to automatic, and it's going on, it'll revert on to gas now. But if we plugged in the van now, it'll move on to 230 volt. Well, you can see the screen, you can just see gas in behind here. The screen actually goes dull once the fridge is running. So it's on gas and automatic. If we plug the van in, it'll move on to 220 volt. And if we plug the van out and start the engine, and you see there AU written there, it's just fairly dumb now. It just goes it goes dumb at night time, or the stop would be too bright at night time for you. But if we start the engine on the van and plug it out, say you're in a campsite and you're heading home, It'll, go, it'll revert on to the uh, engine itself. So if you're using the fridge, the automatic setting is really what you need to be doing because if, uh, say, your post or something trapped out outside, it'll go on to gas itself, say, in the middle of the night or anything. Um, if you forget to, if you plug out the van, you don't have to come down here and start pressing buttons. It'll revert on to the engine itself as you're driving. But uh, you can do them manually as well. You can do gas, 230 volt, your 12 volt, and then the last one then is automatic. And to switch off the fridge, just hold your finger on that button. And the fridge goes dead. So that's the that's the fridge at the moment, it's off. So when you come along to switch it on, you just hold your finger on the button. And the whole thing lights up again. And then you can revert, you can go through whatever you want. We're just leaving it automatic. So there's not much else to your fridge, I'll just show you the door. You just press in the wee button here and the door opens. And uh, inside the fridge, the only wee thing that might be useful to you there's a wee catch here that pushes in and out on the just on the light here, and as you close the door, that'll leave the, that'll vent the door for you when you're not using the fridge. So after you come home and you switch the fridge off, you can bring that out there, and when you close the door, you can see there it just leaves a wee gap at the door there, unless the air into the fridge, and the door's actually you know the, the door's actually sitting there. So that's just a wee extra feature on it. And we'll just push that back in again. And that's the normal position it should be in. So that's really all there is to your fridge. You have your freezer here. Um, this one here you can actually 
if you can see underneath there there's a couple of clips these clips here if you want a bigger fridge and you don't want the freezer you can actually pull out these two clips here and remove this uh, freezer door and it'll give you, a, give you a bigger fridge or you can leave it as it is and you'll have the freezer at the top and your fridge at the bottom but if, you, if you're not going to be using a freezer you, can, you may as well have a bigger fridge you can just take off that and store it somewhere and that's how it's taken off as a clip just on either side just underneath there so the next thing we're looking at here is it's just your hob here um, you can see that your oven and your grill uh, control knobs are on the front everything's on the front of this here so what we're looking at here is you can see this that's your grill that's your oven then you go across here to your different rings and the only thing it has extra now is an electric ring that you have to sort of watch out for that you don't leave that on and bring the glass litting down top of it because that gets very hot and you can't see it actually you know you can't see if it's hot or not so always make sure especially with kids when you're plugged in the van if you've had there on that there back ring there is going to heat on electric so always make sure that's at zero there or that there but that there that's it actually off there now and it does heat up fairly hot so that's the only thing I've seen them before where somebody's put the glass down on top of them when they're on and it just shatters the glass but that's the sort of worst case scenario but you can see here you have an igniter and it's just the same as normal you turn them around and that's your your different rings lit and they have a temperature control now there is safeties in these as well there's wee safety thermocouples here which means that the gas won't come out until the, the, the rings actually lit so it doesn't matter if somebody starts screwing at them, there'll be no gas coming out. And you have your, your grill here and the, your oven here your oven here at the bottom. Now the oven, you just have to make sure you open it from this side, the left hand side here. It actually swings out that way just to be just so just so you know. So So the next thing we're looking at here is your heating controls. Now the, the heating works on gas and electric. Now you can run the you can run the heating on the on both or you can run it on the gas on its own or the electric on its own. So this bottom one here is uh, your power selector, what, you, what you're going to use. Now at the moment, you, we're working off this wee nub here, it's on gas. So that's on gas only at the moment. And you have two different elements on electric. You have 900 watts and 1800 watts. So if you just want to go up full blast on electric, you can go up to the top or you can go down to 900 down to the, bot down to the bottom. Um, so that's, that's your full electric, that's half electric. That's gas on its own. And you can see down here at the bottom, then you can mix both. You can do gas with one element of electric, and at the bottom then there's gas and the two elements of electric. So that's that's the that's the mix, that's mixing there. That's mixing with with one element. That's gas there on its own. So if you're not plugged in gas on its own, it's the only option you have. And a campsite now you can put it onto electric. The only thing with the electric heating is going to be a lot slower to heat up, and it's a lot quieter. It nearly sounds like the heater's not actually working, but on, on the gas it'll blow a lot uh, stronger and you'll actually hear the heater a lot more than what you will on electric but the electric will get there eventually uh, the same with the water if you have it on electric you can heat the you can heat your water on electric in a campsite or even outside your house um, the same thing the, the fastest way to actually heat it would be on gas or actually on the gas and the electric if you're plugged in but uh, the electric will get you there as well so at the moment we're, we're not plugged in so we'll just have to go on gas so we're on here this one and the same thing up the top now this wee nub here is at zero and that means your heating's actually off so it doesn't matter what you do down here if that's at zero at the top your heating's off now the first setting we have is heating the van and to heat the van we just bring it down to that first one and you see we get a green light inside now the green light means it's it's working properly and it's firing up okay if you get a red light on here it means your gas is probably switched off and it hasn't lit up properly and what you have to do is go back to zero again go and correct your gas and come back in and switch it back on again but normal operation you'll get a green light inside here which means that your heating is actually working and then you have a choice then this this inner knob here that i'm turning is the temperature inside the van that you want to heat the van at so you have one two three four and five now generally if you run it about three or so it'll cut in and out and it'll regulate itself to whatever that temperature is but if you leave it at five it's just going to keep going forever and it'll get very very warm but every van's different because of the size of the van so you can just mess about with the heating yourself but that's the temperature that, that that you're setting the van at and that's heating the van there on its own down the bottom is heating the van and heating the water at 60 degrees we'll just bring that on around to here and 
up the top here is then heating the water at 40 or heating the water at 60. That's without heating, so that's just heating the water on its own at the top. Now 40 degrees is good enough for just doing your dishes and stuff in around the kitchen and stuff. And if you want to have a shower you put it up to 60. So 40 is really for in around the van just normally and 60 for your shower. Because the 60 can get very hot. No, if, if it, it actually goes maybe a bit higher than 60 when it's sitting in the boiler for a while. So we'll just turn this back off again and that's your heating off. And uh, that switch at the top there is just for lights and stuff. But that's your uh, that's your heating controls. So what we're looking at here now is your actual heater, and it's just in behind. That's the driver's seat there. So it's just underneath the seat behind the driver, and you can see you have a pump here. That's your water pump, and that's the heater itself. The only thing you're really going to have to go at, and you can access this. You can see we have the door open outside there. It's this little yellow valve, and that's your drain valve. And what that actually does is it drains the water out of the the boiler itself. Whenever you want to get in the cold weather or you want to just drain the van, you can open that up there. So if you're storing the van over the winter time and it starts to get any way frosty, you'll have to come in and open that valve up there and that'll start draining the water out of the uh, the boiler itself. And you, what you'll do then is switch off your, your pump and open all your taps in between hot and cold and all the water from the taps will go out through that valve out onto the street. Now the main thing is that you're going to have to open all your taps in your kitchen and in your shower and in the, the bathroom sink as well. Open the whole atom between hot and cold and make sure your pump's off. So at that stage all the water is going to start draining out through this onto the street. Now we'd recommend on the very very cold winters where you might get minus five or the very heavy frost that once you get to the stage where you've at there, that valve just, I'll just show you here, that's, that's it lifted up there now and that's it back down again. So once you lift that there up and if your taps open between hot and cold, we'd recommend that you actually blow onto the taps if you can. And what that actually will, will do is push the water away from the heads of the taps, because the taps are only just made of plastic. And that's the part you want to really protect. Plus it'll just empty all your pipes if you just give that wee blow in through, just in the very heavy frost. But um, what you'll do then when you come back and you want to recharge the, uh, the heater with water again, is you'll close the valve into that position there and open your taps put on your pump and open your one of your taps on the hot position and what that'll do there it'll it'll fill up this boiler here first and at that stage you're going to be getting the air coming out of your taps now once you get a free flow of water coming out of your tap you know your boiler's full and that's you back in action again so that's really all you have to do with the uh, the heater now I would recommend maybe not storing too much stuff in around the heater because it needs a bit of air to operate you know the likes of blankets or anything in here um, if you could just keep this space here maybe as free as you can that's your water pump they don't give much problems but that's just where it is there if we we open the tap now it works in the pressure system and you hear the pump coming on when you close the tap it'll go off again and that's just your pipe work and you have uh, you can see the, the the cardboard pipes here going out throughout the van for your heating so so the next thing we're looking at here is just your TV aerial now we can see here on the the booster itself, we have a green light here at the moment. Now, what that's showing there is your best signal. What you're trying to get there is as close to green as you can to get your best signal. And how you'll do that is if you loosen the nut on the top of the, the aerial and push it up and turn it. Now, at the moment, we're, we're, we're getting a good signal in there for all the time, but you you might get to a place where when you look in here, that there's nearly sort of ready orangey colour. Before you tune your TV, push that up there and turn it until you get the as close to green as you can, which is in this wee, that, that wee LED. And there is a wee switch here to switch it on and off. But you can just leave it on, it goes off at the van, just in case somebody switches that by accident and you wonder why you have no reception. There's a wee switch in there, and that just switches on the booster itself. And you have, there's extra outputs here for, if you want to put on an extra TV or anything. Um, at the moment we're just running one TV out, but there's an extra two spare ones on it here. So that's your aerial. Once you pull pull your aerial down, just lock it back up again. That's the wee lock on it there. So in behind the underneath the seat, just behind the, the passenger seat there, you'll see you lift up and you can access this from outside as well. You have your jack and wheel brace and just your leisure batteries in that box there. So you have plenty of room if you wanted to fit another extra battery, you'd have room there behind it here. We put in an extra box. But that's all that's in there.
So what I was on about there between hot and cold, if you open your tap there, that's the hot position and that's the cold position. So in between two, in between the both of them there, and that's opening the two pipes and letting the air in. Now at the moment I have the pump on, the water's just coming out there, but that's what I'm talking about there when you're draining the van. Turn off your pump, open up the yellow valve and open all your taps in between hot and cold, which is about that position there. And just let the air go out through it and that's what I was on about maybe if you can blow onto the tap here just to give me sure you blow all the, the water out of the head of the tap itself so we're just looking at your toilet here with the you need the pump on for the for the toilet to flush you just flush the flush the toilet by pressing this button and you'll have a little red light coming on here to tell you when your your cassette's full so uh, you can see well there's a couple of different lights there's like half full and full and it shows you there what you have to do but You'll see the lights coming on there, you, you'll get used to it when you have to change the, the cassette. So when around the van here you'll see you'll have different light switches. I mean that's the switch there that lights up to be lights up above there. And then you have the wee individuals, wee individual lights then. So you'll get used to where all the lights are and what they do. And what looks nice or whatever at night time and all. So we're just outside here now and I'm showing you that's your, behind the passenger wheel is your valve for your grey water. Just open and close that and then on up here, just below this wee locker here, you'll see another valve, and that's for your fresh water. And that's just down, down here. Just open and close that. And your your main plug in here, and a wee storage compartment. And then that's us. Remember I was showing you the all valve earlier on from inside. That's on the outside. And this is your water fill here. You just put an attachment on here, and it fills in your water. And if you're wondering what that is there, that's just the exhaust from your heater. We're just looking at these handles and these drawers here, just to let you know, you see they just, they just open and close here. This bottom one here doesn't open, it's just that's a false handle, so just if you're pulling with that, that doesn't actually work. So we're just here at your engine compartment here now. The only thing you're really going to have to look at, that's your, your window wash. We'll go across here, that's your, your brake fluid. Your dipstick's down here. And this is your oil filler cap your power steering fluid and then if you ever have to jump start the van you can see this wee red thing here you can flip that open and you can put your positive lead off your uh, jump leads onto here hopefully you'll never have to do it and put your negative onto just even the frame of the engine somewhere see if you can see it Maybe the, see the likes of that there you can put your negative on there so just if you ever have to do that that's your because the battery is on the floor inside and that's just your water for your, your engine coolant so the next thing I'm just going to show you is underneath the passenger seat, that's your main trip for your 220 volt. There's a wee grey box there and there's a wee glass lid that goes over the top of it. So that's just your, your for your mains coming in, that's, that's the trip box for it there. So what we're looking at here now is just your uh, gas compartment. So you have your gas tank here. And if you want to switch off your gas, just turn the knob on the top, the valve there clockwise that switches off your gas and then you can remove your hose switch it back on you can go that way just open it up like a tap it goes anti-clockwise to open now if you're taking off your hose you can see the nut there and we've left you a spanner that that loosens you can see there it says close on it so it tightens anti-clockwise and it loosens clockwise so it's written there on the side of the thing close so it's anti-clockwise to open and clockwise to tighten and that's the spanner there for it so we'll just leave that off for you now that's the gas off and then on this side here you have a wee barbecue point you can put your wee there's a wee adapter that goes in here it'll be in the blue bag inside you'll connect that in there and turn on your your gas here and that's your barbecue point for outside and then in this compartment here what that is there is your filler for your water. That there we wipe it there just clips into the side. That's the compartment just behind the driver's door. And then connect that onto your onto your tap and that fills it up. It's a, it's a flat hose comes with it. And there's a lead there for your 220 volt. So in this compartment here is just a your what the only thing's here is your handle for your corner steadies. There's two corner steadies at the back of the van that you can screw down. Just to steady the van if you find it moving about with people running about inside at night time and a good tip is to leave it underneath your pedals in the uh, cab if you have the steadies down that you don't forget to bring them back up again just leave it underneath the pedals and that'll make sure you don't forget so I'm just inside the cab here to show you a few bits uh, the reverse camera here you see you press this bottom button here 
I might have to just start this thing up. Uh, see, there we go. If you press that bottom button, the first thing you see is a blue screen. You're going to have to press the the sorry the second button up here, and that's showing you the view outside. So the procedure is switch on the on button, and then just press that button, the V2, V1, and that'll show you your view at the back. Um, your stereo here. I don't know if you can see it, there's a wee button here and that just brings that screen in and out and you turn it up and down here and your aircon is here you see the wee, with the wee light came on there and just turn that back around to cold and put it on your fan so that's your aircon for your cold air and you hear the engine changing note there um, the stereo itself you just have to mess about with it and see how you, how you get on with it um, the only other thing really in the cab is these blinds here. You just push on these wee buttons here, and your blind comes across, meets in the middle, and the same on the far side there. So just close them when you're driving, and I think that's really about it. Now, there's any other stuffs in this blue bag, your wee connection for your barbecue point, and uh, just a bit of information your service books and stuff inside that the black bag there for uh, just for keeping all your insurance stuff and log books and stuff. It's handy enough to have. So I think I've sort of covered everything, but you can always give us a ring at any time at all if there's any other questions you have on the van. But that should get you started, and uh, I hope that video will be a bit of help to you. Thank you.